Now this looks like a job for me, so everybody just follow me as we need a little controversy because it feels so empty without me. That was perfect. Thank you, Lou, on the assist with that. Hey everyone, how's it going? It is I, the real Randy Chavez. I'm coming at you today with a Earth 2 update video. We do have a lot to go over, so everyone, if you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Everyone say, where is Dashi? Where is Dashi? I don't see her. All right, so uh, questions I'm going to get into, and then I'm going to get into kind of the metaverse of what Earth 2 could be. Right now, a uh, question. Could E2 be as big as YouTube? This is a big one. Uh, I'm Short answer would probably be not right away. A uh, longer detailed answer would be, yeah, anything's possible when you have this much of a cult following right now. You have such a big base, and we're growing. We have deep. Uh, There's a very deep base. All this 300,000, 400,000 users, very, very deep, and we're about to go wide. We're about to get hit mainstream as Phase 2 drops, as Dubai opens, as... Uh, clearly, people have seen, you know, the withdrawal videos, people literally making a thousand percent on their money. And that was within the first couple of months. And that's just with this short amount of people. Logan Paul has mentioned it in streams and other streams. You have Matt Laurie and other YouTubers, big YouTubers, hundreds of thousands and millions of subscribers. Uh, but they haven't made actual videos on it. So uh, as far as big as YouTube, YouTube is very ubiquitous. Doesn't cost anything. You, you could just sit there and veg out. But for a video game, you kind of have to be a little bit connected. You have to know what's going on. Uh, you do have to have some what's that called situational awareness when when playing. Now, next question: Would it make sense to build bridges between islands, or will we just use portals? All right, so uh, a couple of different answers here. Bridges will probably be used for people to show off their vehicles, whether it's a warthog from Halo, or if you have you know a Tesla. I plan to have a Cybertruck in here, or build whatever you want. Uh, anyone that built any of those really cool cars in tech class back in the day, or shop class, whatever it was called, CO2 probably cars. CO2 cars. <laughs> uh, so anything like that would be really fun. Again, you're going to have raceways. You're going to have things for go karting. You're going to have like essentially Mario Kart in the virtual world. Now, portals will probably be used if you want to drive or transport your materials to another place that's too far to drive, like going from mainland USA to Hawaii. There's probably not going to be a bridge for there. That would cost tens of thousands of dollars because you're buying international territory, you're buying U.S. territory, and it's just it's going to be too much. But what people would probably do, they would have places on the West Coast saying, like, okay, just drive through this portal and go out to another portal on Hawaii. That would only cost a couple of hundred dollars to do that. Uh, and it doesn't have to be from West Coast to Hawaii. It could be from New York to Hawaii or wherever. And that's just if you want to go from one place to one place. Um, for smaller islands like the Galapagos or for uh, places like in the Bahamas, yeah, you could build bridges there because they're relatively small spaces in between. So it doesn't, it shouldn't be too bad, but that's going to be how you're going to transport materials. And there's going to be aircraft as well. If you have a giant aircraft like a C-17 or KC-10 or even a C-5 that can carry a quarter of a million pounds of cargo, yeah, you're, anyone who's going to uh, have those are going to be paid a lot of money to transport all of the materials for everyone. Uh, next, we do have an article from, this one is from the BBC. I was big news in the market today. Roblox, how the children's game became a $30 billion bet on the metaverse. Gesundheit, well, I mean, hello. Um, so David Bazuki Bazook, is about to become a very rich man as his video game platform, Roblox, floats on the New York Stock Exchange, valued at a cool $30 billion. Now, gaming marketplace. Roblox is already the world's largest user-generated game site. Players use core building components to create and share online worlds that anyone can explore, very similar to uh, Minecraft. And just take take a look at the graphics right there. Like, it looks fun. It looks cool. Uh, they look kind of like Lego creatures, and that little doggo is insane. I love him. I don't know who he is, but I shall call him Snuffy, and he shall be my Snuffy. Now, it looks cool. It looks fun. But that is not like really good groundbreaking graphics. That is like Wii graphics, that's Nintendo graphics, which again, they make great games without having to have these amazing, uh, you know, Red Dead Redemption type graphics. That being said, Earth 2, you saw in the trailer, the graphics are much more detailed and much more better. That's, is that a word? <laughs> We're learning today. A lot better than Red Dead Redemption, than this. And you have these, I don't wanna say snobs, but you have these people that say like, oh, I don't want to play this game unless it has really good graphics. Regardless of the storyline, I, I have a friend like that, call him JC, and he just won't play a game unless it has good graphics. It's like, you're not, not a real gamer if, you, if that's the only games that you play. Either way, I digress. Um, but it is free to play, relying on purchases paid for in currency known as Robux. What does that sound like? Free to play, 
it's, it might be like a free to play, pay to win, a, a Clash of Clans, something like that. But E2, you don't need to pay anything to play. Again, not in the future. You can go in and explore for free. If you want to buy something, like if you want to buy skins, again, skins will be something that will be offered. And you could even make your own and sell it to other people. And especially if these are going to be NFTs, these are going to be absolutely so heckin' huge. $30 billion game in there, and the graphics are okay. And yeah, it's, it's, it's big, it's fun, a lot of kids play it, but really not a lot of older people play it. It's really more geared towards kids and teens with their parents' credit cards. But what about Earth 2? I have like 2% of you that are 13 to 17 years old. The rest are like 24 to 44. We are it. <laughs> this is it. Now, again, it's virtual reality, so yeah, kids will be the future of it. But right now, for the next 10 to 20 years, that 24 to 44 age range, the bulk of my subscribers, those are the ones that are going to be ruling the metaverse. Those are the pioneers of Earth 2 Marketplace. Now, moving on. The uh, more than 1,250 developers earned at least $10,000 in Robux, the in-game currency, in 2020. More than 300 earned $100,000 or more. So even an extra 10, 10K if you are in the uh, any third world country, that is a game changer. That is a class mover. You go from being extreme poverty to maybe just poverty like that. If you make $30,000 a year, you're in the 1% in the world. A lot of people don't like to talk about that because they, you know if you broaden the scope, that suddenly they're not the victim anymore. But I digress on that. $100,000 a year, and this is for just Roblox. This is something with, uh, again, it's a lot of users, but... They don't have if they have NFTs in there. I don't know about them. They're not as ubiquitous yet. They're not as well known. But Earth Two, if each property and tile is connected to an NFT, I cannot fathom. It is hitherto undreamt of what it could be because there are trillions of tiles, but there's also only fifty billion that we could use. So already it's a finite resource. Already it's something there's a limited amount of, and each one is unique. It's not like Top Shot, where Top Shot, okay, you have these same moments that you could view for free on YouTube, but they mint 75 of them. So there is a lot more than just the single one. And they're unique, kind of, but there's 75 of them. Uh, and those are the really rare ones. There's some that are several hundred um, that are minted. There's some that are thousands that are minted that aren't worth that much. But, God, these are absolutely insane. Anyway, the versatility of Roblox has a huge part of its success, thinks Louise Shorthouse, who's a senior game analyst at Ampere Research. Quote, it's not just a game. It's a platform to create games. End quote, she explained. What does that sound like? What are we all planning to do? Snowball fights, racing, bowling, at every single mini game that you could think of, the, the limit, the only limit is your imagination. So, quote, it is a bit of a marketplace where you can pick and choose whether you play an adventure game, a shooter, a puzzle, and a lot of it is free to play, which is good for children. End quote. Again, the exact same thing. I, if I had the choice, like, this could be, you know, a, a little bit of a popular game, like, if I were to create something let's say like a pizza eating competition and say I just have 7-Eleven pizza right next to me. Uh, say that. And if, like, say I charge, you know, a, a dollar for, or, or a quarter for each try, you know, a, a dollar for the day and you can play as many times as you want. And let's say maybe that makes me a thousand dollars a day. Or I could be able to go and say like, actually, I'm going to put this out for free. And maybe just because of the ad revenue that I get from it, Instead of a thousand dollars a day, I'll make a uh, hundred dollars a day. I would rather do the hundred dollars a day just for the ad revenue, not receive anything on it, just so we can again grow the hobby, build everything, and just be able to get it out to more people. I don't want uh, if anyone's ever seen Jurassic Park, uh, where the owner says like, "No, I don't want this to be for just the super rich. I want it to be for everyone to enjoy." And if you try to take care of people like that, you know, it comes back to you in spades. So. Uh, outside of that, we do have a uh, another quote that it's available for a variety of devices from PCs and Xbox to apps on iPhones and Android devices. And again, in phase two, we will have the apps on Android and Apple. Uh, it allows users to play each other regardless of which machine they're using, which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, there is pent up demand for PlayStation and Nintendo Switch releases too. So potentially it has lots of further room to grow. Same with this. And the good thing about this is you don't need a crazy computer for Earth 2 to enjoy it. It could be done on your phone. It could be done on an old school laptop, maybe even a Chromebook or an iPad. Oh, moving on in the 
article. Uh, lockdown provided a huge boost to Roblox as children physically cut off from their friends flock to it. Makes a lot of sense. And anything that brings you into the virtual reality. Not only could they play games with their mates, they could visit virtual theme parks, attend concerts, birthday parties, and chat to others. Daily active users jumped 85% in 2020 and now has 37 million globally. Okay, so that's the number to beat right there. 37 million globally. I don't want... Again, this has the potential where if it gets big enough, let's say 30 million users, which... Again, if 1% of China gets in, and if those have seen my last video about VeChain with this, if it gets in, it will not be banned in China. It will not if it is using VeChain. Uh, you know, 1% of China is 10 million people. That is just 1%. When things, go, when things go viral in China, they go viral. No, that is not a pun for uh, what we're going through right now, but seriously, that is just in China. And it's not even translated into other languages yet. There's 300-something thousand users that we have is mostly just with English-speaking players. As of January, the number who played Roblox uh, at least once a month, just shy of 200 million, according to traffic site R-Trax, marking a 67% increase on the same month earlier. And this is with the graphics being poop. I mean, the, you know, again, they're okay, and I don't care about graphics. I, as long as it's a good game and it's fun and free, yes, that, that's all I need. But clearly, I, I do not care about graphics. But there are many that do. Um, the metaverse meetups. Uh, the CEO's plans don't stop at gaming. He hopes Roblox can become part of the metaverse, a series of interconnected digital worlds where people hang out, work, and learn. What did Microsoft do the other day? What did they succeed in? In having that giant, giant meeting in virtual reality. Obviously, he had the one person that was on stage that was you know, normal, but everyone else was dressed up as their avatars doing this. And it wasn't just a rinky-dink meeting. The CEO was there. So. Oh. The term was coined in Neil Stevenson's 1992 science fiction novel, Snow Crash, where it served as a virtual reality-based successor to the internet. Similar ideas have been around for a long time. Gamers and game makers in particular have long dreamt of virtual worlds where they could live out their lives and lock down and gave everyone a glimpse of such a life. Like, anyone seen that episode of Dragon Ball Z where the narrator's talking about Gohan going Super Saiyan 2 saying, We've caught glimpses of it before, sounding like Alex Jones, but that's exactly what's happening here. We've caught glimpses of it, and now we're about to see it in full throttle. Quote, the idea was amplified by the pandemic, and even as we come out of it, online socializing is still going to be popular. It's about making a game into something more, a social space and entertainment venue. End quote. That makes 100% sense. When I first got in the military in... 2012, 2013, oh God, it's been so long, 2012, 2013, most people like on our days off, we'd go out, we'd go party, we'd go have a few drinks, we would physically go out. Only once in a while would me, I, the oddball of everyone, I said like, hey, you know what, there's a lot of cool conversations happening on Facebook, I kind of want to just stay in and continue this because it, it's fun. Again, I was a minority, and no, like, that, does that pun kind of, uh, and the smaller group of people that did that, no, no one did that in 2013. But as I was getting out, after I came back from one of my deployments on 2016, it, it seemed that almost all of the new airmen that were coming in were not going out anymore. And it wasn't like a cash thing. It wasn't like because they didn't have money. We were all relatively poor in there, but it was because the world was changing. I saw it from the time I got in to the time I got out, which is only four years, that people in general, the younger generation, are not going out as much. And this was well before the pandemic. This is like four years before it. And the world has been changing since then. And yeah, there's always going to be people that still go out. But if there's people in general that every once in a while need a break, and now with this, it's going to become so much more fun. <sighs> Again, this is something that could absolutely go to the moon. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Pixelated parties. Grand plans indeed, and a space that rival gaming platform Fortnite is also determined to get a slice of. In September, developer Epic Games announced a three-week-long concert series that took place in the game's Party Royale Island. Mr. J1S wants to... I, I'm doing... I'm going to be doing the uh, E2 Has Talent. Mr. J1S is going to put on concerts. There's going to be... I plan to put on concerts with my piano, with violin. Uh, everyone is going to have their chance at fame. Again, there'll be cash rewards given from me. Not even from the game. It's going to be from me. Uh, so outside of that... Again, as far as NFT goes, if you've ever bought a skin in Fortnite, if you've ever gone to Fortnite and said, like, oh, I want this, whether it's it helps you in the game because it gives you additional armor, or it's for clout, going to all your friends and say, like, hey, look what I got. That same exact thing is why NFTs are going to be huge and exactly why if 
all of our tiles and all of our properties are connected can increase again another hundred X on some of them. I don't I don't see US tiles at fifty dollars a tile right now going a hundred X. I see some tiles that are a uh, dollar or fifty cents right now can go a hundred. But again, those are just tiles. You're going to have properties. There have been several several properties already that have gone well into the five figures being sold for ten, thirty, forty thousand dollars. And that's when you can't even do anything. There's no ad revenue. There's no buildings on there. That's just from, uh, you know, speculation. Once this has ad revenue, people coming and playing, there are going to be six-figure deals that are going to be done by the end of this year. Mark my word. And next year, there are going to be seven-figure deals done at the end of this. We've seen that before in Decentraland. We've seen that before in uh, Earth. Oh, not sorry, uh, Earth Two, Second Life. We've seen that in there. So this is something where the potential of this is, is still huge even though people have already made 1200 1500 percent absolutely ridiculous so um getting to the last of this quote it is so strong that in space and a lot of people have stakes in it with developers making a lot of money end quote um outside of that there's a couple more things i wanted to read to you guys sorry this video is getting a little long um one of which it happens to be on the faq so shout out to e2 spain for getting this on twitter uh number 55 in the faq says uh, I have bought the gold mine slash oil well slash coal mine in so-and-so. Can I mine the valuable raw materials there? This is the answer that only came out. It only showed for like an hour or so before they took it down. Quote, yes, if we can verify the mine, there will be a series of verification processes for... Stupid mouse. <laughs> for this, if our data does not know the mine anyway... Details will be announced as soon as they become relevant to the game, and we cannot guarantee that these raw materials will be as valuable in Earth 2 as they are in Earth. And if you go to the fact right now, that is gone. That is no longer there. So moving on, uh, I do have another question from Motiva Productions. This is a long one. Uh, also, I've been thinking Red Dead Redemption grossed $750 million in its first weekend. Fortnite grossed over $7 billion in one year, gaining another $6 billion the next year just from in-game purchases. These are just games, but E2 is basically the world. You'll be able to do everything in E2 since the game is free. Everyone will be able to play, it, which brings more people in. From tiles, skins, weapons, in-game purchases, and all the little mini-games and literal games that will be created inside. I mean, we are just scratching the surface, not even mentioning ads and promos. I think that E2 should be compared to the video game industry as a whole, which is soon valued at a trillion dollars, growing significantly each year. May seem foolish me writing this now, but if they deliver, uh, we are looking at a future multi-trillion dollar business. Would love if you made a video discussing what I wrote here. Love your opinion. Okay, so pretty much I went over this during the course of the video, uh, but at the same time, yeah, if if I were one of the developers right now and someone said, hey, uh, let's say there's you know seven of us and we want to give you you know a hundred million dollars so that we get you know fifteen million dollars each, no. Absolutely not. I, I would not if I was one of the developers. It would be have to be a 10-figure thing, like billion, for them to, to, to say yes, in my opinion, just because this could be worth potentially so much more than that. So that's as far as... Next one goes out to James Econ, says, Yo, Randy, another great video. Fire. I'd really like to hear your views on what E2 is worth for a small-time investor slash gamers like me who don't own either, you know, a ton of tiles or they don't have great locations like massive football fields, both real and virtual. I know this is all speculative at the moment, but thoughts? Okay, so for small time stuff, what my if if I had like no money, it's going in there, I would try to get five dollars, and I would get three tiles in Chavez Topia, and I would go, like it doesn't matter where, as long as it's somewhere in Chavez Topia, but not above that red line. If anything, I'm going to start building south. You know, I've, I've built long ways. I'm going to start building south uh, and just have a bunch of activities more of that. Because, again, north of that red line is international territory. So uh, you, that would still be part of Chavestopia, but it would just be more expensive. So I'd get $5. I would buy three tiles and think, what could I do to make these three tiles really awesome? Uh, it could be a... Again, that's you have 30 meters, you can buy it in a straight line. There's a couple things you could do with it. Whatever idea you have, just put it in there because that will, Travis Topia will get foot traffic. It will. If you are able to go and 
if you have time, let's say like, hey, you're a kid, you don't have a job, or say you're on unemployment and you know it's like kind of covering your bills, maybe, um, and you're doing like a part time work. Every single second that you're not in the real world, I'd be in that game. I'd be I'd be mining as much as I could. I'd be trying to broker deals with people. Be like, oh, if I find something, someone that wants to buy this, can I get a piece of that action? Something like that. Like if you didn't have much extra money, that's what I would do. Five dollars in there, and then just start mining materials and loot off everyone. Build up those three tiles and make it the best three tiles that you can. Um, if you had a little extra money but you didn't want to put it in the game, uh, okay, well, I would go to the dollar store and see what all of that stuff can go for on Amazon or eBay and just flip it, start flipping, go to garage sales, just do that. And then, yeah, and, and then just, uh, then you have some extra money to put into Earth too. That's what I'll do. We do have a, a tweet from Shane as well. There is one more thing we have. So Shane, I'll, re I'll show you guys a quote. Auto buy bots. Your time is just about up. Credit card payments are also way ahead of schedule. Love our team. This is one thing I personally cannot wait to go live as it means we can work to pay you out as out much faster over time. We're making progress, guys, and appreciate your patience. Why is that important? It's because Dubai is unable to go live. It's unable to be released until we have all bots and stuff out of there. So that means Dubai should go live before Phase 2 does because he hasn't mentioned anything else about Phase 2. So I think the counter for Dubai is going to go a lot uh, the counter for Dubai is going to go a lot sooner. It's going to be sooner than, than phase two, and which is great. Uh, I think that's great. That's perfect timing. Everyone with a little bit of money is going to be able to buy uh, their last thing in there. And I, again, I think Earth 2 Happener is the place where you say, like, I don't want to have my tiles conflicting with anyone else's. So try to go there and see what's happening. Okay, I might not even get into Dubai. I might try to buy a couple tiles. Um, but um, I think I think Dork Slayer... Um, has a plan for it saying like, oh, like we don't want to be in the mix because everyone's going to be trying to buy wherever and it's really going to be kind of chaos. But I think what he wants to do is he wants to go and say like, no, I want because he's uh, that owner of the island of Gibraltar. And he's like, no, we want to make something separate away from where everyone else is buying. And then we want to connect that, I guess, via portals to Gibraltar, which is a really good idea. It's really good on him. That's something I might do to connect to Chavez Topia. Um, but most of my extra money is going to just the Chavez Topia. So I'll let you guys know. Anyway, guys, I think that's it. Uh, I love you. I'm sorry for this long, long video. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. You guys are, you, you guys, uh, keep me going. You know, it's, uh, 630 at night. I have more videos to upload and this will be uploaded in the morning, but I love you. Please let me know. Comment, comment your love. Comment your love. I love you. Goodbye. Flicks. Dip. Meow, 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 meow. Oh God. Meow.